Well, we're continuing this week's conversation on domestic violence. Studies show one group experiences it more than others. That's the LGBTQ community. I found the numbers to prove it, but also realized the reasons why and how it happens to this community are not researched as much as they are for other groups. When we see a purple ribbon on someone's chest or in a storefront, we know what it means. It's the universal sign of support for domestic violence victims. There's a lot of support out there for people who struggle with the unthinkable behind closed doors. But there are also people who suffer through this significantly more than others. No, not necessarily women, but the LGBTQ community. A branch of the CDC called the National Center for Injury Prevention and Control collected data on this issue. It created the National Intimate Partner and Sexual Violence Survey, which does something many other domestic violence statistics don't. Highlights homosexual, bisexual, and transgender people in its numbers. It found about 44% of lesbian women and about 61% of bisexual women have experienced rape, physical violence, or stalking by a partner. Compare that to only 35% of heterosexual women. The men's disparities aren't as drastic but still exist. 26% of gay men and about 37% of bisexual men have experienced rape, physical violence, or stalking by a partner. Compare that to 29% of heterosexual men. The survey also found transgender domestic abuse victims are more likely to experience violence in public. Breaking it down by types of violence, 20% of LGBTQ victims experience physical abuse. 15% have been verbally harassed. 11% reported violence involving a weapon, and 4% experienced sexual violence. Very few scholars have taken the time to dig into why this happens. Medical scientists at Northwestern University refer to something called the minority stress model. It says being part of a minority group contributes to high stress. The scholars at Northwestern say same-sex couples are dealing with the stress of being a sexual minority. One partner is physically taking their added stress out on another. Experts also use the double closet phenomenon as a contributing factor when discussing the topic with the BBC. They explained how some victims in same-sex relationships are reluctant to report abuse because they don't want to be outed by officials. As these trends become more widely known, assistance for victims is slowly but surely becoming more available. In the past few years, the Federal Violence Against Women Act expanded to assist everyone, regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity. The CDC says it's focused on preventing all intimate partner violence represented in its research because the key to creating respectful, nonviolent domestic relationships actually starts outside of the home with friends, family, and communities respecting just how serious this issue can be. Now, when it comes to seeking help with domestic violence in the LGBTQ community, it can be tricky. That's why I chatted with Dr. Adam Messenger. He's the author of LGBTQ Intimate Partner Violence Lessons for Policy, Practice, and Research. And he says the rates of domestic violence among same-sex couples are indeed higher. And he explains why. Are, are the rates different among same-sex couples uh, against opposite-sex couples? Yeah, so... So that's a great question, Cody. There is surprisingly a difference. So people who have experienced same gender relationships are actually more likely to experience domestic violence than people who only experience different gender relationships. And that's also been found to be the case for those who identify as sexual minorities, such as lesbian, gay, bisexual, or queer, relative to heterosexuals. It's been true across the board for all forms of domestic violence, psychological, physical, and sexual abuse rates are higher among sexual minorities. Do we have any idea why? That's a great question. It's a hard question to unpack because there are so many different factors that go into understanding domestic violence. Research has shown there's actually a lot of similarities in the risk factors for domestic violence among sexual minorities and heterosexuals, such as um, experiencing child abuse or witnessing abuse between your parents. Scholars believe that there's a link between those youth family violence experiences and adulthood domestic violence because you're exposed to abuse that makes you socialized into accepting abuse as a normal, healthy response to conflict. But if we're really gonna to try to understand why sexual minorities are at an elevated risk, we need to move beyond those common risk factors to helping us look at risk factors unique to sexual minorities. Can we touch on some of those and just start listing those off of, of, of what is different within that unit than an opposite sex couple? Absolutely. So 
On the perpetration side of the spectrum, some research suggests that experiencing homophobia and biphobia can result in extreme levels of stress. Now, minority stress, any form of stress, can be responded to in healthy ways, such as going to the gym to exercise, um, meditating, and so forth. Others will respond to that extreme level of stress using violence and aggression. So experiencing stress does not necessarily mean you will perpetrate domestic violence, but it is an increased risk factor. But on the victimization side of the spectrum, some research suggests that abusers will specifically target sexual minority victims that they believe are less likely to leave them, less likely to ask for help. And that can happen for a variety of reasons. So for instance, research suggests that sexual minority survivors have a difficult time recognizing they're being abused because they grow up in a society that's taught them that real domestic violence only occurs between a heterosexual man and a woman. In addition, sexual minorities oftentimes have additional barriers to seeking help. They might not have available resources in their local area that accept sexual minorities. They might not have resources in their area that have services that are designed specifically for sexual minorities. They might fear and experience discrimination by service providers. And all of those make it much more difficult for sexual minority survivors to reach out for help. Abusers who know that might feel more emboldened and empowered to initiate and engage in abuse. After that interview with Adam, it made me you know, think about my upbringing in like rural America and how access to resources in a town of 2,000 people for the LGBT community are... Doesn't happen. It, it doesn't exist. No. So it, it is, it's even trickier to find that help. And I think it's also important to point out that this is a social, mm -hmm. you know, this is not a group of people that you can measure in some way or that mm -hmm. have <laughs> necessarily like something in common that's like biological. So mm -hmm. like this is clearly a social issue. Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, this totally. is something that's as a result of something that's happening to these people. And that's why there has to be theories and not things mm -hmm. that you can prove. Because, I mean, what other explanation is there? Like, we have to kind of dive into why is it happening this way into why? this group of people? And I think your package did a great job at talking about that minority stress and the double closeted. It is, it is, it is. they are tricky waters to navigate, mm -hmm. but there are resources out there if you need them. Yeah, they're real. They're real mm -hmm. things happening. Well, if you find yourself in need of help, the National Domestic Violence Hotline is available 24-7. Just call 1-800-799-7233. You can also reach out to the National Coalition of Anti-Violence Programs at 212-714-1141.